if you recall from last time, I had a very, uh, very simple binary classifier. So I've got some data here that's just uh, album covers that are either um, labeled as metal or not metal. I have uh, just a simple Keras model and, and a train script that uses some Keras preprocessing functions to just like generate uh, data from that folder and, and train on it. And so right now I just have this script hard-coded to train on the sample data collection. So this is just so I can train really quick uh, so we don't waste too much time. After I um, activate my virtual environment, where I've already installed everything in requirements, but just so you know, I'll just be sure. I'll make sure that uh, I've installed all the packages I need for this project. So requirements.txt, uh, I have here in my folder, and it's just a list of all the pip packages um, that are required to make this run. And that's something you can do by doing pip freeze. I'm just saying, hey, freeze all the requirements. Uh, dash L means just in my local environment because I, I'm in a virtual environment here. And spit them out into requirements.txt. Uh, so I can just run my stream script to make sure that works. I get a lot of warnings, but uh, my Keras function found 40 images. Uh, it's training the two big box. Cool, that seems to work. The other main part of this project was the, uh, the Heroku Flask part. So I've got a, a very basic Flask app here. It's got a route that returns a simple template uh, with a form, and then another route that calls on my model to make a prediction. So I'm gonna, oh, once I'm in my environment, I can run it with a gunicorn app. So I'm saying, hey, look at the app um, file, run the app variable. And so it boots up. And here's my app. Yes. So the idea is to give it a metal album and return a prediction on the genre. Uh, very simple, very hacky, um, very much just a proof of concept. I'd like to develop this more, but before I do that, I want to put some tools in place to make it easier to develop. So part of like coding for production is not just you know, writing scalable code that doesn't break, but it's also writing code that's easy to change. Um, so that if I, if I give this to someone new, they can easily make changes, and future me can also look at it and make, easily make changes. Big part of that is trying to like decouple uh, all the separate parts. Um, so that, for example, I might want to change the model to say PyTorch or even just scikit-learn. Um, and I wouldn't want to have to change the rest of this code base. As it is now, like my Flask app um, is expecting Keras, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I would have to modify a whole bunch of different stuff if I wanted to just change what library I'm using for my model. So step one is to separate things. I'm going to create a package, a Python package to host my um, machine learning model. So in a folder called Albemarle Classifier, that's just what I'm going to call my package. I'm going to create a setup.py. Uh, and this is just a um, convention for uh, defining uh, a Python package. So let me see if I can remember name. This is one of the programs. to install. So that's just going to be like a list of, of folders in the in the directory as the setup file. Uh, so this might seem redundant, but I'm going to create another folder called album classifier within it that's going to host this source code. Okay, so it's 
So now I'm just going to throw my model in there and my train script. In my Flask app, I want to do something like this, like from album art classifier import uh, model, uh, so that I don't have to like import all these things. I've got all this logic to um, using Keras functions to make the prediction. So I'm actually just going to throw that in a separate file. Classifier returns a value between 0 and 1, and if it's 1, it's not metal. If it's 0, it's metal. So it's just a simple binary classification problem. Of course, we need to um, import the right TensorFlow libraries. And to import this, uh, it looks something like this. So from this package uh, and this sub package, import this function. Again, I probably want another um, file to load to load the model. I'm going to leave this hard coded for now. Probably bad practice, but oh, definitely bad practice. But I just want to make sure I've got this uh, the logic separated. I want all the, the machine learning logic uh, separate from my Flask logic. So that's the goal at the moment. See my predict model thing. I still need to get rid of model for the input in the file. And now instead of doing all this logic here, I should just be able to call. no longer need to import any uh, TensorFlow or specific things in here. So in my um, package, I need init.py. This, like, um, I don't have to actually have anything in it, but this signals to Python that, like, hey, um, this folder is a Python package. So now I should be able to install this album art classifier locally. Uh, okay, install. One important thing here is uh, I have a, a dash E that stands for like editable. So if I make changes to that package in, in my folder, I want um, I want Python to recognize the changes instead of me reinstalling it every time. But I'm just going to point it towards the folder and let's hope this works. So it's installed that package locally. Now, um, hopefully I should be able to run my Flask app again uh, and have, have nothing break. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. Yeah, nothing broke immediately. Let's open it up. Server error, okay. What do I want to say? And P is not defined. Makes sense. So I just forgot to also 
can fit model. Restarter server. Um, import. Stupid mistake. So I'm getting a lot of warnings. Just ignoring this for now. It's mostly just like TensorFlow warnings on future deprecations. Um, so cool. So what I've done there now is just sort of a very basic first step. Let's make the machine learning logic and the app or API logic uh, decoupled. I might clean this up later into like a single object or class that I'd import. But for now, this is okay. The idea is like I could go into the internals of my Altamar classifier package and you know change from TensorFlow to PyTorch or something like that and app.py doesn't care. So let's just uh, commit all this. But to deploy to Heroku, uh, there's a few simple commands if you've got the Heroku CLI. Creates and then the name of the app. I'm just going to say CI CD tutorial. The left of the name. It's already taken. Two. There we go. Um, so that just creates um, a Heroku app. I can open up. Nothing's there yet because I need to push code to it. Um, but Heroku, at least from the CLI, works by creating a remote. Heroku, um, which by default will automatically deploy the master branch. So if I want to get this whole thing deployed to my Heroku origin. Let's hope that works. So just to recap, um, there's this file, prop file. I've got in my repo, which tells uh, Heroku to spin up a web dyno uh, and then execute this code. Heroku will also hopefully install all these requirements. I'm also specifying the Python version. So these are all just little pieces of information uh, to help Heroku deploy our app. Looks like it's um, installing all the requirements here. Uh, okay, cool. So looks like it's launched. Uh, it's giving me the URL of my Heroku app. So I can actually look at the logs any Heroku app with their CLI too, super handful. Uh, so I'm just look at dash dash tails to say like, just show me the tail of the logs of the most recent ones uh, at this app. So this is the app. Right, so look at this, I'm finding something crashed. Mm. Okay, module I found error, couldn't find my local package. And no shit, because I did not add it to my requirements file. So I can literally just add um, the same thing I would enter to my uh, pip to install. So commit that. While it's building though, let's um, just go to Heroku. So I've got my app here. Um, you can see there's a build in progress. Um, using free dynos, uh, you can upgrade to Hobby for seven bucks a month. Well, probably the main perk is that it's always on. So with, with their free version, um, the app will sleep after a certain level of activity and then boot up again once it gets a request. I think it's fine for hobby projects, but um, 
if you're boot up for save for a machine learning project, author requires you to load in the model. So then like to make the first request really slow. So it looks like it's deployed. Okay, here it is. Cool. So on Heroku, we're working. Um, still pretty happy app. Uh, so far, all we've accomplished really uh, is separating the uh, sort of app logic from our machine learning logic. Uh, the way I deployed there, right, was just push into master and it automatically deployed. And you'll notice that I forgot to add something and it broke. And then my app was broken. Um, so clearly, I want a step in between to like make sure this code actually works and runs before you deploy it to the world. So we want to start adding some automated testing. Like I think the smallest thing you can do is start uh, linting, like looking sort of at just like the syntax and making sure that all makes sense. Um, and so there's a few Python linting packages. The one I'm going to use is called Flake 8. And the idea is it will scan through all my source code and highlight any places where I like violate good practices. So by default, I think Flake 8 will, will just check for like PEP 8 best practices. Uh, so Flake 8 works pretty simple. Like I'll just give it a path to a file, say app.py, and it'll spit out a bunch of warnings, right? And it's useful to catch things like. Um, I don't care too much about imitation over tabs, but it's telling me things like, oh, I'm importing NP, but not using it. Same with OS. Um, and if there's unused variables, it might. So it's a good way to catch sort of like trivial bugs, uh, as well as enforce consistent style. So I can also just like run flake gate in my directory and it'll scan my whole package. Uh, but right now, that's going to take a long time because I've got a few giant folders like .git and then .data and the env that Flaskate might, um, that has to like scan through. So I don't want to waste any time there. So to my project, I can add my dot flake eight config file. It looks something like this. And I can run these commands. So this is all stuff you can find on the flake eight documentation, but I can just tell it to ignore all of these folders. Yeah. So uh, if I run flake it should detect that top level file and ignore them. This should be a pretty quick run. Yeah. A um, lot of things to fix, apparently. Though, personally, I prefer indents. I prefer tabs over spaces. Um, so. I just want to disable this. So I can pass like a, another um, thing to just be like, OK, ignore this error code. So I should see less now. Um, this over indented thing I can also ignore. I know that's just like sort of similar. I use tabs. All right, so I've got a few issues. I use Atom, and or I have a package with like eight linter. I've got it disabled now, but if I enable it, it should just like do this in the editor for me. Highlight sort of the flake eight errors or linting errors. So you see, um, it's telling me two blank lines found, or it expects two blank spots in part of a function, highlighting these guys because I'm not importing them. So super useful to get a, a linter activated on whatever um, editor you're using. And again, like all these are suggestions, right? And you're allowed to uh, ignore the ones you really don't care about. But uh, it's, it's a really good starting point. And you can add custom rules too. OK, so we got this flake eight thing. I'm just going to. didn't fix all of them because I want to show how this will fit into a CI thing. So I'm just going to push this up to So at the moment with um, 
this Heroku app. We're deploying it using, sorry, I'll go to the deploy tab here on my Heroku dashboard. There's a few different methods of deployment. So right now I'm using the CLI, which is just pushing to my Heroku master. But I think a better way um, or an easier way is to just, if you've got an existing GitHub repository, you can just connect it to that. So I've got one called CICD, I believe. Yes. I've got this manual deploy button. Uh, but if I want, I can enable automatic deploys so that like whenever master something gets merged to master on my uh, GitHub origin, Heroku will initiate a deploy. Um, and you notice this nice little check mark here. Wait for CI to pass before deploy. Like I don't want to deploy anything that's going to break. I'll just move away. Uh, this is just one of the few uh, CI integration things out there. Uh, I find Circle CI pretty easy to use, um, but Travis is also popular, and there's you know dozens of these. Every like uh, big tech company will probably have some offering. Like I know Azure will have something built in, and I'm sure Amazon does, etc. Add project. So CS the example. That's my GitHub repo. So we're sort of on the edge of DevOps here. Uh, that is like sort of infrastructure as code, automating, testing, things like that. So CircleCI here is giving us a nice little pick your operating system, pick your language, and they're generating like a sample YAML file for me. It's not too important what the, the syntax is. Uh, I can walk through what's going on here. First thing it's doing is building a Docker image. Then it's installing dependencies. Um, from a, a saved cache, if it's done this before, save time. Uh, again, it's doing that in a virtual environment, just executing this command, uh, and it's saving, saving those requirements to a cache so that later tests can run quickly. And now here's the idea where we want to like actually run some tests. But let's first just copy this file. Yeah. Copy. So in my project folder, top level, I want a dot .circleci uh, folder and a config.yaml. Let's just paste this in. OK, so I actually want Python 3.75, I think. That's my runtime. Yeah. Uh, this. I can leave unchanged, install the dependencies, save the cache, all that's good. Uh, I don't have any tests yet, I don't have any artifacts. Uh, but I do have a linter. So I want my first CI command to, to lint my project and look for any like easily fixable things. So it's as simple as telling it to execute. So let's just commit that all that. Just commit this for now. Uh, start building. It's now running that YAML file, which is essentially like, let's install uh, in the right environment, this package and run our tests. And right now, our tests are just run the linter. So we can take a look actually on what's going on in the job. So it's sort of like um, walking us through the steps, spin up the environment, check out the code, restart the cache, but there was no cache yet because we haven't done this. Now it's just installing the dependencies. which is probably the longest step here, but hopefully will be quicker down the line. So what I expect to happen, it's going to run that flake eight command and fail because there are some things I left unfixed. Yeah, here we go. 
Oh, command not found. Even worse. I installed pip8, but I never added it to my requirements.txt. So even that, like having that automated test was useful because I found that I was, something was missing. It's uh, running another another test. Um, the status on my latest commit is running, and so uh, from Heroku, if I have this set up for automatic deploys, um, it's going to wait for that CI to finish before it deploys. So I don't have a chance of now deploying broken code. Interesting. Man not found again. So in my config here, um, I'm running flake eight, but I'm not. I did not tell Circle CI to activate the virtual environment before I did that. So I can tell it to just run a series of commands. The first one should be. Activate that virtual environment. Then run flake eight. Okay, so I just want this to. Fail in the right way, I suppose. Okay, so yeah, so it's running my my custom command from the linter, uh, and you could fail and see it's spitting out all the the errors it saw. So I might just go through and quickly fix all those. So now I'm just relying on my editor to highlight the issues. For me. Like a Whoops. Maybe using this variable. This is all just sort of conventions around uh, Pep8, I believe, or some close to version. These guys. Okay, I feel like that was most of it. I can do a quick sanity check on my local. In load model, I've got semicolon. It's sort of just a habit from JavaScript. And in predict model, nothing's there except. Oh, interesting. So it doesn't like me using except without specifying what exception. Uh, and so I can actually tell my linter to ignore this specific error with a no QA comment, and then um, if I only want to ignore a specific error, for this example, E7.2, I can put that in there. So if this violates any other routing rules, um, they shouldn't get ignored. Let's see. I should have a clean slate now. Cool. Okay, so a typical flow of, say, if I'm collaborating on a project with people is not to just commit to master, right? It's to um, create a pull request usually. It's good to have your circle CI like run your tests at the pull request level um, before it can even merge it into master. Because uh, in an ideal project, master is always in a deployable state. So let's just go to a new branch, add the stuff. So I just pushed up a new branch. Um, I can create a pull request. So this is basically 
a request to merge this um, into master. And you can see Circle CI is, is running some checks on it. So I can, in my settings of my repo, like specify like rules around merging. So I can add a rule for master. First of all, I can say require uh, someone to approve it before merging. That's pretty common if you're collaborating with people. Um, but I can also say require status checks to pass before merging. So make sure Circle CI passed before I can merge this to master. And so um, GitHub's automatically found that I've got uh, a Circle CI test. So I can require that before this can be merged. So just save that rule. So this has got a green check um, that my tests passed. So um, it's okay to merge. I mean, ideally, I would have more tests than just a linter. And actually, I wanted to get to more, but this took longer than I thought. Um, and I'm just about out of time. So uh, I'll end it there. Hopefully, that was of some value seeing seen that in action. Um, if you have any questions, let me know now or ping me on Slack about anything specific.